Are you a fan of New Year's resolutions? I don't see many people nodding their heads there. I'm not sure that I am, really. I worry that all too often they come out of our anxieties, our fears about who we are and how people perceive us. And all too often, they don't really amount to very much, do they? And they leave us feeling less content and more like a failure. Well, if you're not making New Year's resolutions this year, or perhaps if you did and then you've broken them already, I've got some good news for you. Because I don't think we need to worry too much about them. I think, in actual fact, that isn't how God works. It's not coming out of our fears and our anxieties. And the change that matters in us, well, in many ways, is very simple. I would like to suggest there's only one thing that really matters. And if you want to make any kind of resolution for the year ahead, perhaps it should be this. The reading we just had comes from the Sermon on the Mount. It is right at the heart of Jesus' teaching. And it is absolutely foundational to what he has to say. And yet, despite that, I think many of us listen to that and think, my goodness, we haven't even begun. Jesus says, don't worry. And I say, yeah, right. I think we struggle with this in really quite profound ways. And that is not a new problem. That the anxiety which seems so rife in our world and in our lives has been around, well, forever. If you heard in the passage in verse 32, it says, the Gentiles strive and run after these things. And Jesus' world, just like ours, was a world which was obsessed with status and appearance and wealth and pleasure and power. And he speaks into that world and he offers a radically different way. And so I've got three things for you this evening or at the start of a new year, three things which I think you will find helpful. And in many ways, they couldn't be more simple And yet we find them very hard to actually do. I don't know if you know about the the lovely G.K. Chesterton quote, which says this. It says, the Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. That's good, isn't it? Well, I'd like to suggest at this new year that we sort of take seriously that Christian Ideal, And we try it once more, because difficult as it might be, I think actually it is transformative. So three things for you this evening. The first is this. I think we should let go of, let go of the illusion of being in control. I think we should let go of the illusion of being in control. This is from verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? So that's a picture of, um, did you hear the thing about sowing and reaping and gathering into barns? And in the ancient world, that's how you kind of made your life secure. You know, if you do your work, you get a good harvest, store it up in a barn, then you can feel confident about the future. And um, what's the modern equivalent of that? I don't know. It's probably uh, working hard, saving up some money, paying off the mortgage. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but... If we put our trust in that, if we think that that is going to make us secure for the future, well, we will go astray. And we've said this before, haven't we? One of the things about wealth is that far from freeing us from anxiety, 
It increases our anxiety. We simply have more to worry about. As Jesus said in verse 27, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? You know, it isn't just that our idea of being in control of the future is an illusion. Well, who knows what the future holds? And if recent years have taught us anything, we know that that is the case. But I think it's more than that. It's more than it's just an illusion and it's not true. I think somehow it's a a symptom of that most foundational human failing. That in actual fact, our wanting to be in control is... um, Wanting to be like God, not wanting to trust him, but to have that control for ourselves. It's our pride that desires control. But what we're offered is not that. It is a faith in a God who is trustworthy. Did you hear Jesus says, you of little faith. That if God cares for the birds of the field, don't you think he cares about you? And if God uh, provides for them, how much more will he provide for you? Jesus says, God is God and you are loved and that is enough. And so at the start of a new year, I would love to encourage you to take the opportunity to, to let go of that feeling that you ought to be in control. And instead, to find your security in God. And you need to do that because no other security will actually do the job. You are profoundly and wonderfully and eternally valuable Because you are a child of God and because he loves you. Learning to find your confidence and your security in who God has made you is essential. Day by day, quietly trusting in who he is and who he has made you to be. So one, let go of the illusion of being in control and instead Trust in the God who really is in control. Secondly, remember who you really are. Remember your true identity. This comes from verse 28. Look at the lilies of the field. They do not labor or spin, and yet even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. Think of the picture. Think perhaps of the summertime meadow in the mountains filled with wild flowers, preciously beautiful, every one of them. And what Jesus is saying is that when things are simply and authentically themselves and what they were created to be, then they are truly beautiful. We worry about being insignificant. We try and dress ourselves up to be something more than we are. We worry about what others think of us and we play that game of trying to impress people. But if you find your security in how others see you, you will never find it. Simply being authentically who you are, who you were created to be, in relationship with the God who made made you, is the only place we find our identity and our security. We live in a world which is, I don't know, how would you describe it? Many would say it's a rat race. Everybody trying to climb on top of one another to prove their worth and their status over and above other people. Do you know the joke about the rat race? Problem with the rat race? Even if you win, you're still a rat. Simply being authentically who you were created to be is the thing the world needs. It doesn't need you pretending to be someone else. It doesn't need you to be uh, a different version of you. God created you to be you and you are utterly unique 
And you have a role and a place in this world which he has created for you. Finding our identity in who we are created to be is essential. In many ways, what that is is humility. It's um, letting go of the pride which wants to be something else and simply being satisfied to be who you are, who you were created to be. Real value is not found in competition with others. It is found, well, in the relationship with God, which reveals who you truly are. And so if we start each day in the presence of God, if we allow his love, his word to remind us who he made us to be, we will be far less concerned with what others think of us and far more able to kind of root our security and our identity in simply being who we were made to be. So remember who you really are. Let go of the illusion of being in control. Find your true identity in God. And thirdly, live one day at a time. This comes from verse 34. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Do you see what he's saying? It's not that there aren't worries. Every day has its worries and concerns. But you have, by the grace of God, enough strength to cope with today's worries and struggles and problems and things that need to be done. You have grace enough for today. What you don't have grace and strength enough is for tomorrow as well. There's a lovely quote by Corrie Ten Boom. She said, worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength. Isn't that interesting? Worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength. God has given you what you need for this day. This day, as every day, is a gift from God to be received with joy, its labors and its concerns to be addressed with the resources that we are given. And it's a day to be lived one day at a time. This day is all that we have. Life is served in small portions. And the reason why it's served in small portions is we only really have the strength to deal with what is in front of us, the day that we are given. We spend so much of our life worrying about the future or regretting the past that our strength and our, the, the grace that we have is spent on things that we can't control. Live one day at a time. And I think there's a real kind of mental and spiritual discipline around that. It's something that's taken me many years to begin to learn. That we're constantly being pulled away from this moment and this place and what's in front of us. But there's a real good self-discipline that says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to deal with what is here now. I'm going to do today and do it as well as I possibly can. And I'm going to trust tomorrow to God. Because today is, in actual fact, all that we have. Don't worry too much about the year ahead. If we think that life is about achievement and the accumulation of possessions and status, well, we'll constantly be pulled away from this day. I think one of the real disciplines about that, one of the things that's very helpful is um, I love the fact that you notice that Jesus is always making reference to nature. He's always sort of observing, observing creation. And I don't think that's just a figure of speech. I think that's something that he did all the time, that in his times of quiet and his times of prayer, his times with God, he would do so sort of observing creation and learning from nature. And I found one of the things that really does help me to just kind of, you know, be in this present moment and be in this day is to look more closely at the world, to see more intently its beauty and its detail and the way that God has made it to be, to see what's in front of me rather than constantly being drawn to the past or the future. Jesus says this, strive first for the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, 
And all these other things will be given to you as well. All of these other things will fall into place. I guess the last thing I want to say is I just want to kind of observe that word, that seek. Seek first the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is amongst us. It is close at hand. And yet it is not something that you will find your way to by accident. That it requires seeking. That Jesus says, knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. One priority for the year ahead. One resolution for this year. Can I suggest it is that? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let everything else fall as it may. Entrust God with all of the other things because the most precious thing, the thing which matters more than anything else is who you are in God's eyes, is your place in his kingdom. Remember those wise men who set out on a journey from their comfort and their palaces. A journey that they didn't know where they were going to end up. A journey which um, left them in peril, facing difficult circumstances and even tyrants at one point, and ultimately led them to be in a stable in Bethlehem, kneeling in the dust, worshipping an infant king. An astonishing journey that they went on, a journey of great faith. This year, you're invited to do something similar. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let everything else fall as it may. Let us pray. God, our Father, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we place in your hands the tasks that we need to do, our unsolved problems, our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your love and protection, we commit each other and those that we love knowing that you alone are our sure defender, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.